This last year, I've been really trying to talk a lot about discipleship and what it truly means to follow Jesus. And at the beginning of the year, we introduced our church vision and how we're going to go about doing that and some key principles that help us, guide us as we glorify God. And as last week, we went over what really spurs us to really want to glorify God, what really spurs us from wanting to serve Him. And that is the grace that compels us, realizing what God has done for us. And so as I thought about this concept of discipleship and I thought about what it means to be a disciple, more and more as I read through the New Testament, the more I understand discipleship is not just merely something where it's just you and God, but it's something where it's about you and your relationship with your church family, with one another. And as you read through the Bible, you just hear so much about terms like being one body or the brotherhood of believers or a family or a household of God, and the more I realize it, the more intimate I understand what God purposed in discipleship, is that we would not only take joy in our relationship with God, but we would take joy in one another. That God in His grace chose to establish the church so that we would benefit. And so I thought about this concept and I asked, well, are we truly being that family that God has called us to be? I mean, what would you, how would you define a healthy family? When you look at it, your family and say, well, how would I want my family to be? What are some attributes of my family that I'm really proud about? I mean, you look at families and you define them as having trust among one another, communication, love for one another, support of one another, always being there for one another. And I just think that is what family means. And so when the Bible talks about being one body and one church and a household of believers, I ask myself, are we truly being a family in those regards? Are we really building trust among one another? Are we encouraging one another? Are we loving one another and serving one another? Where we can always trust and rely on one another. Because the more I read through the scriptures, the more I see that's the biblical view of the church. Now one of the things that tends to break my heart sometimes is this idea that we loosely use the term family. We'll say, yeah, my, that guy's my brother and that person's my sister. But then we won't have any association with them during the week. We won't really think about them during the week. We won't, and we, we cordially just define a church family as merely being ones who just have a commonness in Christ that meets for on a Sunday morning for an hour. And yes, we do have a commonness together that we're together and we're a church family, but is it more than that? Should we be more intimate and close to one another? Should we really develop that trust, that relationship, that care for one another? Because that's more the biblical view of the church family. That it's not just coming together for a Sunday morning to sit on a pew and watch some Asian guy speak to you. But it's about really loving one another. Encouraging one another throughout the week where you say, these people are my family. They're my priority. They're the ones I want to call on the phone and spend time with. They're the ones where if I have a problem in my life, I can know I will go to them free from judgment. And what I will experience is Christ-like empathy and compassion, and they will help carry my burdens. I mean, that is what family looks like. Isn't that what we think of a healthy family? We're always going to be there for you. We're always going to assemble together. We actually care about one another. And so I think about this and I ask, well, how well are we doing that here in Moses Lake? Are we really striving to be the biblical church? Because we know we want to be like the first century church in form and in spirit, but are we being like the first century church in form and spirit in regards to our relationships with one another? Because as I read through the New Testament, especially through the book of Acts, and the way that the apostles like Peter and Paul and John, and they write to the church, it has some heartfelt words. And they're saying things like, I'm your servant, you're my brother, I love you, let's honor this person. And it's just such a beautiful sight of intimacy that they actually knew each other and they were in, involved in one another's lives. I think about all the commands of Christ. Now we talk about how we need to submit to Christ and we need to obey Christ out of reverence for God. But as I study the word of God more, the more I see that in order to actually fulfill the commands of Christ with, its, with God's own intentions and to be effective in doing so, it actually really hinges on the quality of my relationship with all of you. 
I mean, how can I truly carry your burdens if I don't have built trust with you to the point where you would share with me your burdens? How can I truly encourage you if all I see is the surface you and I don't really dig into your life and encourage you in the way that you need to be encouraged? How can I show you mercy to, when, when I don't even know what you need mercy in? I mean, if we don't have quality relationships among one another, we truly can't be that family that God has purposed. We truly can't obey the commands of Christ that God has actually called us to obey. But the amazing thing is these commands that we fulfill, if we build these relationships and we get involved in one another's lives, and I'm thinking about you and you're thinking about me, and we're spending time with one another, we understand God more so because we understand the love that we have for one another. And that constant love for one another is a testament of who God is and what God is about and what God wants in our lives. And that's an amazing thing. So I asked myself, how can we truly grow as a family? How can we grow to the point where we're giving each other the encouragement we need, the support we need, the love that we need? How can we truly build relationships? Well, once again, I always go back to the Bible. And one of the answers that I got from the Word of God was that the way that the early church grew relationships was by spending time together and being hospitable to one another. Amen. Hospitality. Amen. You see, this is something that is so powerful, is being hospitable. This concept of saying, you know what, mi casa is su casa. I mean, think about how that is. That you give people an opportunity to enter into your home and you're willing to give your time and your energy and your food and all the work that goes into preparing and you are just talking and you're discussing and you're sharing wonderful stories with one another. And that builds trust and relationships. That builds openness with one another, doesn't it? I mean, you get close when you're spending time together. You get close when you're eating together. You get close and you allow in a comfortable setting to get to know one another. I mean, this is a biblical concept throughout the Old and New Testament. In the Old Testament, we see Abraham, for example, how when the three visitors came, he saw them from afar and he ran to Sarah and he told her, get food ready because we're getting some visitors. And when they came, he was hospitable to them. <coughs> or we see his nephew Lot in, the, in a little bit afterwards in Genesis, how a couple of angels enter into Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot sees them there in the town square and Lot says, come to my house. And he provided them shelter. He provided them protection. You see, in the Jewish culture, they were a very communal society. They were very hospitality oriented. It was common for Jews to go to the town square and when they needed a place to stay and they would, Jews would go and find these people at the town square and they would bring them into their home. And we even see in the New Testament this concept of hospitality. We see that Jesus was constantly being shown by hospitality, by Matthew, by, by Mary and Martha, by Lazarus, by Simon the Tanner. They would provide him meals. They would enter into their home. They would build a relationship with one another. I mean, Lazarus was one who was hospitable to Jesus. And we know the intimacy that they had, that Jesus had with Lazarus, because Lazarus was called a friend of Jesus. They were close. And even the importance of hospitality, we don't notice this very often, but even in the qualifications of an elder or the qualifications of a widow who is seeking help from the church, one of the common denominators of qualifications there in, in both those cases is that they are both meant to be hospitable. Why is that? I mean, think about how hospitality gives you an opportunity to really build relationships. You think about with the widows and how they had an opportunity to meet the needs of other people because they were hospitable. You think about how elders would be able to shepherd effectively because they actually knew their sheep because of hospitality. We think about our relationships with one another and how we should be close and have hospitality for one another because that's more of a biblical view. I mean, the church was designed to be one body, designed to be a communal church was designed to be involved in one another's life. We don't like to think of this idea, but the church was an open church in the concept of they knew each other's sins. Now, we're a pretty private country. We don't like people to know our wrongdoings. But that was something where they would have a trust and an intimacy with one another, where they would make known and confess their sins with one another, and they would pray to God for one another, and God would bring healing upon them. That's a biblical view.